A dyad of swans, necks arced in a graceful heart, a doting pair of penguin parents, standing stoic against icy arctic storms, snouts and manes nuzzling into one another, entwined in adoring heterosexual monogamous bliss. Love in the animal kingdom, at its finest and most natural. Right? Wrong. Very, very wrong. You see, animal sex life is far more diverse than you can ever imagine. A cursory glance into their world suggests that the habits of us homo sapiens to shame and ban sexual difference and diversity is simply foolish. Let us start at the genitalia, a very good place to start. Penises, so many penises. An object of obsession and humiliation amongst humans, but my goodness we wouldn't be so embarrassed about shape or size if we considered representation amongst animals. Gutter penises, double penises, penises that have spines or are shaped like corkscrews, four-headed penises, detachable penises, just to name a few. If you were a Sintonarca iriastis, a small moth from Indo-Australia, you wouldn't be interested in how big your penis was, but how beautifully it sings. We're not entirely sure why they do this. Theories include shooing off rivals, wooing females, or even scrambling the sonar of nearby bats. But we do know their penises sing. And what of the clitoris? Freud infamously stated that the clitoris was an inferior organ. What would he have said about the great bony clitoris of the chimpanzee? The clitoris with a groove of the saltwater crocodile? The thorny clitoris of the fossa which grows as large as a penis? Or the clitoris of the female spotted hyena that's used for mating, urinating and even giving birth? So what do animals do with their genitalia? Well, that is a whole other story. Take bedbugs. Mating for these little critters involve a sharpened penis penetrating the female's exoskeleton multiple times, on the head, belly, legs, back, and even heart. Only 30% of their encounters are with females, however. 20% are with completely different animals, and 50% are homosexual, which has, incidentally, led to the male Afrochimex constrictus bedbug to evolve a small, sterile vagina on their backs. But more often, genitals in the animal kingdom are used for pleasure, and it comes from many, many sources. More than a thousand species exhibit homosexual, or more precisely, bisexual traits, and these species include mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and even insects. Bats are partial to fellatio and cunnilingus, while dolphins, horses, porcupines, squirrels, and kangaroos are experts at masturbation, although not as expert as chimpanzees and orangutans, who have been known to create sex toys from sticks. Among many species, orgasm and pleasure, not reproduction, is a perfectly legitimate goal for sex. And even if it is the goal, moderation is rarely the watchword. Fewer than 10% of mammals are monogamous, incidentally only 20% of human societies are too, and some take this to the extremes. The Antonychus, for example, will have sex with as many partners as they possibly can in 12 hours, so much so that many males lose their fur and die of internal bleeding soon after. So, why should you care about this smorgasbord of animalia sexual diversity? About spiky penises and groovy clitorises, sterile back vaginas and masturbating porcupines? because it reminds us that human beings haven't come up with anything new. We cannot, must not, condemn each other for sexo-diversity, because diversity is the norm in the animal kingdom. Too small or too big, too much or not enough, deviant or defective, all fall away when you take this perspective. Humility is in order here. We are just a drop in the ocean. Sexodiversity existed long before we ever came along. And as always in the animal world, no matter which part or which aspect, a world of discovery.